This is uh, the 6th of November, 1988. And now, Paul Hoffman. I've got the bio. Is that you right? I was born on an island in the middle of the Nile River, no lie, in betting because it's true. You crossed the, the Atlantic five times before I was three. So, uh, rapid, quick, into straight, becoming a suit, uh, two years where for six and a half days a week, all I, uh, I had to wear a suit and a tie 24 hours a day, locked into the dorm at night, full sex to the academy. And, uh, just realized that that wasn't whatever that was that wasn't it <laughs> my mom went to a wedding where at the wedding somebody else saw her name mentioned the college as an alternative for my sister who wasn't having a good time in college where she was at and it wasn't until i was halfway down the road from massachusetts to long island that i had the faintest idea of what i was going to where i was being interviewed for it was so and i got no lie. I got to the campus, I took off my tie, and I said, I'm home! Uh, and uh, it's never been the same. So that's why I'm making up flyers. For the college? For the college. The college still has openings where they, they don't have students. I mean, let's talk about how Paul Hoffman changed from when you all first knew him 20 years ago on Street Patrol. Police Patrol. <laughs> You were pretty much a straight out. I was, oh, I, was, no. I was number two in terms of straight, straightest. No. Well, so I, so we're having this whole community meeting upstairs at the end in, in, about the beggar kid. So the story is after hours of soul searching, I go downstairs and Richard is opening the refrigerator. And I say, I stammer a bit and I say, Richard, can do that. just had a long, we're not doing this anymore. And Richard goes, it's nothing! It's nothing! <laughs> and continues pulling out the food. And I get this feeling of like total powerlessness, of total like, it doesn't matter what you want, Paul Hoffman. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter hours of whatever. It's like, you're going to get run over. It's like, your life is not going to work this way. Basically, face it. It's living in my car, like being a small person and doing a radical act, like, like my business card, this freelance angel, you know. Being like <laughs> an, incredible, nice. an incredible being on the planet, like getting these ideas for these earth deals, you know, and printing up, rating my bank account, printing up 75,000 of them, and three months later they're, they're out in 64 countries, you know. The only shot I've got at it is that there's some community that will stand behind me and say, we want to hear you. And that, that was the experience for me in Fresno College, because the turning point for me came in India when I w stopped going around and taking notes because I went around to everybody that was there and said, how do you live? You know, what makes you happy? You know, what's worth doing? How do you how do you make it on the plan? And time and time again, the students as well as the faculty of the college said, it's within you. Somewhere within you. It's like, I could tell you what works for me, but I can't tell you what works for you. And I remember the farewell at the airport where they sent me off on my southern, my Southeast Asia trip. And it was like, everybody's like, bye, bye, so long at the center. And then the, everybody piled into Ben Gray's International and rode out to the airport I'm like, surprise, I really like you, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, this was the time that I just like, bon voyage on your journey into yourself. Because I went into Nepal and I, I stayed there six months thinking I would leave at two weeks the whole time. It's like, it just got deeper, deeper into my journal deeper into like marijuana, deeper into like meditation, sitting and reading Alan Watts, the, the blue on knowing who you are, mm -hmm. deeper into like taking apart my mind, what I say is like undoing that pressure cooker, that steamroller that says you have to keep doing it. It's like everything it says you ought to, I just didn't listen to and stopped. So, like, I <laughs> so he took two times of acid, you know, on my birthday alone up the hillside swine blew up, you know, only a few months later, a few months earlier, I've ever having been introduced to marijuana. And just like said, you know, whatever it is, I gotta find out. And, you know, that experience in Friendsville College and coming back, uh. well, coming back, the story is, you know, the worst culture shock is trying to come home and realizing there's no home to come back to. And going down to Rom's Pizza uh, Spaghetti House at the foot of my hill and asking for a job and him going, you know, you gotta cut your hair if you want a job in your board. You know? <laughs> You know, and then taking off to California and being a poor hippie on the road and uh, 
Craig Mackler saying, you know, there's this town called Inverness. All you have to do is show up in Inverness and everybody will take care of you. <laughs> you know, and finally have a important backpack all across country, you know, arriving with $20 travel check and finding uh, nobody wants me, that, that there's, not, there's nothing. And just having this, you know, shut down everything that said, you know, you were the, you were the hope of the future, like we were talking about before, of like, whatever's working in Woodstock or isn't working in the anti-war system, it's like, we're the generation that's going to synthesize from all the different cultures. We're the generation that's going to go around and the future starts now. You know, it's like, the, ro the computers, the robots are going to take care of all the industrialization and the, everybody's going to, the hardest problem we're going to have is what, what do we do with our leisure time? What do we do with our leisure time is something creative, something that we're uniquely doing. And all of those dreams and visions just getting crashed onto, uh, I actually had TV at that time, long story, but after I took acid and a couple more times was like higher than you can believe in this, this whole imaginative vision of like understand what's going on in the universe. And met these people, a bunch of guys from Calcutta, another from Australia, another from Algeria, and we just took off and started hitchhiking across the whole Gujarati desert, you know, a thousand miles of strange desert with no money, hitchhiking trucks, uh, you know, and no food, and like, you know, a truck full of sugarcane crystal, you know, the back, and you know, and like the first little bit you eat of sugarcane crystal it tastes good because it's glucose, but after, you know, <laughs> 24 hours of no water, no nothing, but this load of sugar crystal, you go, I really don't want it anymore. <laughs> it's like, uh, ended up in Goa and <coughs> Goa, Goa, sleep All right, a bathing suit on the beach and no food and no money and just ran out my lungs. Got TV and so when I came back, strange culture shock. Can't you know this? The parents are like this bright, articulate, quiet, shy, intellectual kid that they sent off on the airplane or the boat. Or he's like he comes back and he's waving his hands and he's mumbling some mumbo jumbo and he's like really excited, but you don't know what he's saying. And definitely got lights in his going on in his eyes. And uh, they're ready to put me in a sanatorium. I mean, if only for the TV. And, uh, so, crash, you know, Inverness. Uh, and finally meet uh, an 80-year-old Swede who was, anyway, he was, he, I, I hooked up with him and he taught me, like, you know, how to, how to file with a hacksaw, you know, and brought all of this incredible vision down into this concrete reality where this is the only thing you have to do. In the Latin, put automobile. Well, yeah, I was I was building a fence for his garden up in Inverness. You know, but basically, you know, this is, you know, there's an A, there's a B, there's a C, and C follows B, which follows A. It's not just a total revolutionary, powerful concept that really, you know, this whole and uh, and the last the story from there, from '72 on, has been about with leaps and starts, building my way back to integrating this vision, which I still hold. You know, incredible things we are and can be doing on the planet. To wit, Barbara Marks Hubbard quoting Norman Cousins saying, It's arrogant to be pessimistic in the face of a 15 billion year trend. It's like, where, <laughs> what's happening on this planet? <laughs> it's incredible. And the grouping together like of the individuals. The brief news around that Tune is. Him in. is Tune the, him in. I ran an information and referral center in Gainesville, Florida, for the all for the alternative freaky ideas. Whenever the United Way information referral got a question for astrology or a vegetarian or a holistic veterinarian, this was the person they would contact. Published a book on the directory of all the folks in in my area. Ran a news created a newspaper, 40-page calendar of the month of uh, things went on. And came came with this idea of having this whole database of transformative systems. Everything from Eureka to Zen. It's like hundreds of different systems, thousands of different techniques for personal transformation. Put them in a database. Get them cross-indexed so that somebody could say, I'm not really sure what I know, what I need, but my life isn't working. And having a relational interaction, interface thing going back and forth so they could connect with you, the book, the person, the teaching, the class, the, whatever they needed. 
and I couldn't get anywhere on that with Florida, so I came out to California, and I worked at PeaceNet, which is an alternative computer service uh, for six months, five months, and uh, basically met a guru, a, a wise person here, and got that <laughs> if it doesn't work now, it's not going to work then. So gave up like long-term visions of like you have to do this, these means to get to those ends, and have basically been living in the moment, living in the mean, living in the present uh, since then. And what that's been about for me is a lot of miracles, a lot of living in my car, a lot of running into people, a lot of coincidences, a lot of people talking to me and getting a lot out of me just being in the flow, in the channel, just being present with them and reflecting what I see and good things happening in their lives. So the latest process on Earth feels, <laughs> and there's a bunch of people who, to me, that 15 billion year trend for me is around group mind now, is working, how do we each be individuals and commit to that and work with each other in a way that's telepathic, in a way that everybody gets their needs met, in a way that's financially self-sufficient, in a way that does good things on the planet that work together, but without a lot of uh, hiding, without a lot of distrust, without a lot of fear. And, uh, and so a lot of shit has been coming up, a lot of like, you know, I, I go to four or five recovery programs, I think Codependence Anonymous, Workaholics Anonymous, Incest Survivors Anonymous, uh, and Sex and Love Addicts. And the process, and the, there's, you may have seen the Bradshaw videotapes, this guy, mm -hmm. you know, right? we bought those and are running those on a regular basis for the community, for our recovery and to help the community like, to talk about, like there's this new age fascism, this idea of like, should be good, you should be enlightened, you should be happy, you should like everything is like, and not talk about like, I really am afraid of this, I really am even afraid to talk about this, I'm really hiding this part of me, and creating a safe enough space to like, roll that out. And uh, what's going on right now is uh, up in Berkeley, is that we have a Sunday night em Emerald Earth Laughing and Drumming Society, <laughs> where we, uh, we're actually getting quite a reputation when people ask us to come out and talk. Thing with like we got all these drums and rattles and things and put an altar to call the four directions the Native American, that whole eclectic, pagan, you name it. It's like just call the ancestors and talk about, and pass a, a, a sacred talking stick and say, okay, what's the truth of our lives in the last week since we've been together? You know, tell what's been going on from the deepest so we can and put out a, a song from there. And it can be like the song you learned last week or one that came to you in a dream or just create one at the moment or just have everybody and then and then pass the stick on to the next person go all around the circle and it's a really powerful community building thing and we just opened it up so we have like um, open to the public where more people can come in and do other things and have, you know, other people can learn to, to do this instead of just learning. Oh the big project, the future project is reforesting the Sahara. Is that the uh, Sahara used to be the bread basket in yeah, Rome? Yeah. And uh, they overgrazed it and you know, did all the shit to it. And there's projects for reading, putting a green wall all around the Sahara yeah. and making it back. Well, they have water. Yeah, they've got they do a have water. huge amounts of yeah. aquifer yeah. underneath it. That, <laughs> anyway, so that's a long term project. Uh, and I just found out I can get Egyptian citizenship because I was born there and get dual passports. That's <laughs> great. So that's, that's the long term.